Hello, 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 everybody. We are back once again for yet another Cafe and Data Archives receipt chain, this time TMS, which, because this is the second time I'm recording this all the way through, ha 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 totally didn't suck having to do it again, stands for The Mysterious Stranger, which is from a Mark Twain book. Speaking of Mark Twain, the password hint is a grotesque and foolish dream. That's a quote. This is a research password hint. It is three words, which is TMS. The Mysterious Stranger. Bada bing, bada boom. This one was written November 1st, 1995 by the owner, and it says, I can't be the only one tired of the runaround these consorts seem to be giving us. Ah oh, well, if it was easy, it wouldn't be worth doing. And besides, I believe Tom let a rather important detail slip. We need to seek out a loose-lipped stranger. Mercifully, I suspect this will be the last consort we need to consult with, assuming I am right about who exactly Tom is referring to, and let's be honest, what am I wrong? One of the more interesting consorts of Padre the Mysterious Stranger has served as his personal ledger maker for the past 85 years or so, and while he may appear to be a relatively fresh face in the House of Satan, I suspect he is far, far more than he appears to be. In life, a mysterious stranger was, well, no stranger to the coffee trade. There are some accounts of his more occult fascinations and premonitions, though he lived a rather quiet life when it came to coffee. How and why he found himself entangled with the House of Satan and death, well, I can't say that I know. It could be his later sympathy for Satan, though. Even still, I can't imagine him ending up in the Haunter Scold for something like that. Unless, of course, a mysterious stranger had some special degree of control over his afterlife, though why he would choose the cacophonous bedlam of pandemonium and not the idyllic warmth of the aurora is beyond me. Regardless, we only need to figure out a way to reach the mysterious stranger, though unlike Mr. Gray and Mr. Walker, he is not known to come flipside, limiting our options a bit. I'll have the palindromic 17 and 71 and look more into it, and perhaps number 44 as well, for the sake of literary parallelism. That was a mouthful and a half, but of course we're hearing the catchphrase of the owner again. Well, if it isn't easy, it wouldn't be worth doing. We've seen that time and time again. Let's move on to TMSO2. This one was wrote by employee number 17 on the 5th of November 1995, and it says, The owner stumbled upon a most interesting connection regarding Mr. Clemens, though I suspect he has already pieced it together on his own. One of the most unique things about Mr. Clemens might just be his departure from the States to Canada. By all accounts, Mr. Clemens should have arrived in Canada around 7 o'clock. No reason for him to be any earlier than that. Of course, after arriving in Ottawa, he could have been picked up at 2 o'clock, and there is a possibility that Mr. Clemens lived a very secretive second life that could have forced him to arrive four hours earlier at 3 o'clock, though there is no evidence of this that I can find. Let's say I have his flight records, which indicate he had to have arrived at 3 o'clock. Not only that, but there are no records of him buying or being bought a sandwich during his travel. Of course, having a sandwich in transit could easily explain a time departure and arrival, though Mr. Clemens almost assuredly did not have one. Either my source is wrong, though she is well acquainted with sandwiches, or Mr. Clemens somehow arrived four hours earlier, sandwich in hand. Which draws me to the missing connection. Mr. Clemens was not Mr. Clemens, not entirely in any case. Perhaps the easiest way to think of it would be like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, except for our purposes, it's Mr. Clemens and Mr. Haley. And who was Mr. Haley then? That I do not know, though I have some ideas. Regardless, Mr. Haley is not a run-of-the-mill Ottoan. I do not currently believe Mr. Haley would qualify for a senior discount, but I could be wrong. So what lies between Ottawa and their retirement home? Hmm. Ah, I hope you see the connection too. So I'm a bit confused with the coding that's come up with this. I've never seen sandwich be used in anything up to this point, so I'm not totally sure what that means, but apparently there is a connection, I'm assuming, between Mr. Clemens, the mysterious stranger, and Mr. Haley, which I can only assume is Haley's Comet. 1066, 1836, 1910, research, it's one word, is Haley. Reason I know, it's mentioned beforehand, I've already gone through the research of this when I first tried to record this entire receipt chain. So, Haley, bam, easy peasy. Receipt number three was written two days after the first one by employee number 71, and it says, I must admit, that is quite the connection Secret has put together, though it still leaves some critical pieces of information unclear. For those who couldn't quite keep up with this train of thought, I believe what Secret is proposing is that Samuel Clemens was not entirely himself in life. And I believe the logical conclusion is that the entity that was part of Samuel Clemens must have been an Ouroborean. Moreover, the entity, Ouroborean or otherwise, died with Clemens in 1910, but in doing so, was able to direct Clemens' demon to the Haunter Scold. Now, I can't say that I know of an Ouroborean who both has the power to direct souls and has an affinity for the Prince of Wrath. Though, I suppose it isn't guaranteed that the entity is an Ouroborean, yes? It is merely a possibility, and a strong one at that. Of course, it could be an entirely unheard of subspecies of demon. Ah, I think I've talked myself into an inescapable corner, eh? Forget I said that. 
forget I said anything, and let's assume that the entity is indeed an Ouroborean, close enough to one. What is this entity? Well, we know the form the entity took, at least in Mr. Clemens' eyes. Haley's Comet. Not the comet itself, of course, but I believe there is a good reason to believe that this entity either draws power from the comet or, well, it doesn't quite matter, does it? I fear that I have started to piece together more than I should have here. Ah, uh, isn't it always how it seems to go? Though if I am right, this entity, though aligned with Satan, is not beholden to him. Quite the opposite, actually. Though we still lack a way to find them, I suspect we could use Haley's Comet somehow, though waiting until 2061 is unappealing to say the least. I'll think about it further, though. We are dancing with the devil, so to speak. While I do believe Mr. Clemens will provide us the information we require, we might be sipping on our coffee before it's had the chance to cool. On to TMS. Oh, four. This one is also by 71 is also two days later than the previous and it says well it seems our search for Mr. Clemens has come to a rather anticlimactic end. Another far more pushy customer Mrs. Umbra has politely requested we stop our search for Mr. Clemens and so we must oblige. I know it must seem like we're rolling over unnecessarily on this. Still customer satisfaction is our ultimate goal and if stopping our search for Mr. Clemens would delight Mrs. Umbra I'm afraid we have no choice in the matter. So without Mr. Clemens' knowledge of Padre Santos's red book we are at a bit of a loss, though we can still move forward from here. In fact, we have quite the spread of comfort food to keep us sated in the interim. I believe number 53 was looking into the recent increase in tremors and their effect on our business. There could be a connection between the tremors and the church. Perhaps they built on unstable ground. We could also follow up on the church's connection, or should I say interference, in Wilson High's affairs. Point is, we can and will continue with or without Mr. Clemens's help. Now you might think I am siding with Mrs. Umbra so quickly due to my own revelations regarding Mr. Clemens, and I wish I could assure you that that's not the case. I will say a part of me worries about aligning ourselves with Mr. Clemens and, more importantly, Mr. Clemens' knowledge, though this is simply not the case. Mrs. Umbra would like us to stop seeking Mr. Clemens, but if Mr. Clemens were to come to us, we could be utterly unable to stop him, yes? Something to sleep on, at the very least. All right, we are with CTMS05, obviously it's passcoded, it's supernatural trivia, Two words, and the hint is Paul's fifth stage awareness. Now, I went and looked all this up. I've already done this before. It's very hard to come by. Only could find it through the actual archive wiki, and it's dream environment. Again, two days later, employee number 35, and it says, Number 71 could have just told me he was expecting the mysterious stranger to visit me in my dreams. In hindsight, I guess I see what he was getting at, but I'm still new to the whole random people who aren't me can enter my dreams at any time thing. If I had a bit of a warning, I would have had a dream journal or something nearby to write down exactly what he said. Oh well, I think I remember most of it, as it was fairly lucid as far as dreams go. Still take everything with a pinch of salt, or a sip of coffee. You know, because salt is something else. Oh, whatever. Last night, I had a dream where I was in sort of a strange building in sort of a village I didn't recognize. There were big machines that I think were printing presses or something like that. Because it was a dream, when I looked at the papers on the presses, I couldn't make out any of the text, but I do distinctly remember reading the word Sirius next to the word Haley. Then there was a knock at the door and a very large imposing figure entered the shop. He was, well, he reminded me of what Padre Santos looks like in a way. Except the figure was thinner, gaunter, and his hair was an unnatural bright white. He was dressed in a pale white suit and spoke with a very low, raspy voice that echoed throughout every fiber of the shop. I don't believe he introduced himself, but he did say something like, I know you've been looking for me. You want to know about the Red Book of Satan's the Book of the Dark Contract. When the stranger said the word dark, the whole room was encased in a suffocating darkness that felt like it burnt my nose and eyes. Everything after that was a blur as the darkness of the shadows in the shop slowly snuffed out all of my senses, then I woke up. I wish this could have been more helpful, but at least we know that whatever Satan's Red Book is, it has some sort of dark contract tied to it. We have the last one, DDTMS06, and we all know that any DD-related receipt is juicy. This one is Pressman. It's a knowledge one, which we're not going to go forward into it because I don't want to spoil anything for myself. It's two words, and let's go through the clues just because I don't totally remember what the answer is here. This one requires a lot of searching, so be prepared. What Solomons exist in the cafe and diner? Any that can be linked to the Ouroboros, and not just Belphegor's alias. Who in Debt Come Do has been called a Pressman? See the MME receipts, we're not going to do that. So, answer is Solomon Langley. I'm excited to see who that is in the future, but for now, we'll just copy and paste. This one's from the owner, as always, per the DD receipts. It was posted on the 17th of November, 1995, and it says, The surprises never seem to cease. Last night, the mysterious stranger, along with an emissary of Belphegor, paid me a visit. Though I should probably keep this conversation entirely to myself, I did have the CADCOM record it. 
and I'm glad I did. The strangers revealed an unforeseen wrinkle in my plan, something called the anathema proxy. Our conversations got cut short by a rather massive tremor. I would say it was a coincidence, but I know better than that. It was no coincidence, but a pleasant surprise. Start of transcript or transmission. I was wondering when you dropped by. So you were expecting me. In a sense though, I see you brought a guest. Eight, I presume? Or should I say, the owner? I haven't heard the name in almost a decade. So she told you everything. I doubt it. I know about the rewinding and the bargain you made, but I'm sure she's kept some of the details to herself. I wouldn't take it personally. It is her nature after all. So, Mr. Twain, you've allied yourself with the Ouroboros. Not quite. So you're still working for Satan then? I owe no loyalty to any prince. I aid Satan due to his pursuit. To open the gates of hell, unleash his father and destroy the universe again? Well, the universe does not have to end. Really? Do you really believe that? Do you expect an Archon like the devil to just let this universe exist as it is? I believe he can be swayed. He has been before. So that's your true goal then. Do you think it is possible? You have seen the universe in its entirety. You have had a hand in its recreation. It shouldn't be possible, but... But there are imperfections. Befago is good, but she is not perfect. There's a slight dilation in two years, but otherwise, things are proceeding how they should. Satan has formed a dark contract with the Hatman, Mothman, and Redman. They'll attempt to open the gates to hell, but fail when Lucifer kills Satan. Then what? Do you really want to know the future, Solomon? Befago has already told me what transpired in the past and what would be our future. Lucifer kills Satan? then picks up where he left off. This time will be different. Are you planning on surviving? No. But this time will be different, I can- Satan has found another way. What? That's the problem with treating the past as the future. Two years, owner. A lot can change. What do you mean, another way? He plans to utilize the anathema proxy. <laughs> ah, no, it can't be. End of transmission or transcript. Oh, we just got a tiny little clue here. The owner died in the past before time was looped back to give the owner an ability to rewrite what had happened. Interesting. That makes me all the more interested in seeing what happens in the future. I cannot wait to see it, but we'll have to get into more of it next time. Until then, sweet nightmares. I just wanted to take the time to thank my Patreons and channel members. Your support is so appreciated. If you are not a channel member or Patreon and you would like to become one, there's a link in the description below. All channel members and Patreons receive 24 hours early access to all content posted on both of my channels. And all Patreons or channel members of the $10 Hellhound tier can request one horror-related video or stream topic or one horror-related game that I play on my live streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Again, thank you so much for supporting the channel and the content that I make.